It is Tony, how are you? Okay, refilming my intro yet again for the third time, cause why not, right? Okay, first of all, I wanna say welcome to the channel if you're new and welcome back if you are already, were already a subscriber. We have gained three times the amount of subscribers um, in since KetoCon. We started at 125, we're now 260 something. Well, it's not quite three times, but it is growing quickly and I welcome everyone. So let's get to the, the subject. We're doing a collab video, um, a last minute entry. So you've heard me mention the, the participants in the, in the um, collab and we had a last minute entry. So budgetketo.clarencemom is also in the, in the collab with us. So we've got Life Adventures in Keto, we've got Keto Twisted Gypsy, Paleo Barbie Does Keto, Tony Talks Keto, who's myself, and we've all done the challenge of making three alternative breakfast options that are keto friendly, that are not bacon and eggs. People have reached out to us and said, hey, look, we're, we're tired of bacon and eggs, scrambled eggs and bacon, the same old, same old. We need some other ideas of what can we make that are keto friendly, that are also um, easy, not easy, or some overnight, some keep meal prep, keep for the week. I mean, there's all a bunch of options. So any, just about every option is probably covered. I've kept tongue twisted this morning. Cannot talk. Okay, so I ended up filming my blueberry, lemon blueberry mug cake, which is one of my recipes. I filmed that this morning uh, because I had accidentally put my coconut milk in the freezer instead of my coconut cream. So you'll see that video first and then you'll see the ones that I made yesterday. So one thing I did wanna say, which was a classic chocolate donut with a chocolate glaze, a cake donut, mind you, chocolate cake donut, and then also a ham and cheese Hot Pocket. Well, I, when you see the length of this video, I don't want it to be intimidating that you're gonna be stuck sitting in front of your phone or your, your however you're watching for a whole hour. So I think I'm gonna take the dough recipe and put it in a separate video by itself because the dough is a little more time consuming and doesn't really do justice because once you make that dough, you can make a head, you could have it for pizza dough, it makes pizza, it makes all, I mean, you're, endless options to make with this dough and it is a really great dough. It was not sticky like normal fat head dough. It is kind of a fat head-ish dough. Anyways, I'll let you see that when you get to the video, but I will be uploading two videos for you tomorrow. One is the dough making for the um, ham and cheese hot pocket. I just felt like it made this video way too long when I included that the dough se session of the video. So I'm gonna edit that into a different video and then you guys will get two videos for me. So I made for you a ham and cheese hot pocket. I made a lemon and blueberry mug cake, which I make my mug cakes in a, in a bowl so that they have like the dome shape, which you can make in a mug and cut it. It's perfect like that too. And some chocolate glazed donuts. So these are all yummy. They can all be made ahead of time. You can put them in sealable containers. You can keep them in the fridge. You can warm them up through the week. All of the, all of the um, they make eight donuts for the cake donuts. It makes five mug cakes and it will make 12 of the Pop Pockets if you want. I saved half of my dough for pizza and the other, I did three with ham and cheese with the Dijon and I did three with ham and cheese with some yellow mustard and some everything bagel seasoning on the top. So that's what I did for you in this video. So enjoy. I hope you like all the recipes. I'll see you at the other end of the video. Hey guys, good morning. I'm just gonna read this from the beginning because I don't really. Anyways, making some coffee. Just made Sid some, some breakfast. He had sausage, eggs, and ranch style beans. And some tortillas. I am currently eating some frozen strawberry, I mean blueberries. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's get our lemon blueberry pound cakes pounded out. This is our fir my first recipe for my collab. Film them backwards because I had my can of coconut milk in the freezer. First thing we're gonna need is a half a cup of coconut flour, which I have measured out here. Let's go down to the action. Here's our half of a cup of coconut flour. Just gonna tap it out. Then they say whisk. I don't get it. Anyways, um, I typically would whisk these kind of flowers because they kind of have lumps. Whatever. Okay, so we have one third of a cup of swerve. Oh no, what? A fourth cup, sorry. A fourth a cup of swerve sweetener. 
we have the zest of one lemon. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we get all of that goodness out of my little measuring spoon. And I saved the bare lemon for something. We may need lemon juice later. All right, so we got that in there. We have baking soda. Wait, does that say baking powder or soda? Baking soda. Right back. Ooh, glad I caught that. Baking soda, one teaspoon. I've made so many recipes, these teaspoons are tired. All right, we got our teaspoon of baking soda. We need a pinch of salt, which to me is a couple of cracks here. All right. We're just gonna mix this around, and yeah, I'm just gonna use these same measuring spoons I've been dirtying up all day. All right, so we have all our dry ingredients mixed together. Now we wanna stir in eggs, coconut oil, coconut milk, lemon extract, and stevia. Okay, and our eggs. So let's go in with our four eggs. Thank you, love. Two. I'm making a cup of coffee over here. Someone drank my coffee. Not mentioning any names, Sid. <laughs> it was really good though. I use that International Delights Caramel Macchiato Creamer. It is not clean keto, but it is delicious. Hi, right, baby. Yeah. Can you trash that for me? Thank you. Okay, so we have a cup, a half a cup of a just barely lightly melted coconut oil. I need our half a cup here. And we're gonna need a half a cup of coconut milk. Ooh, and a little heavy. Okay, there we go. Put that in a Tupperware. Half a cup of coconut milk. All right, we've got a half of a teaspoon of lemon extract. And a splash. I mean, we can't have too much, right? Then we need a fourth of a teaspoon of vanilla. No, a fourth of a teaspoon of stevia extract. We usually just drip it, but we're gonna just do this for accurate measurement purposes. Okay, we got that. And then a half a cup of wild blueberries. Frozen, by the way. And these were just fresh blueberries I bought and I threw in the freezer yesterday. Ah! Runaway blueberries. I have too many blueberries, right? Oh. Stand by. We have to roll these in some, a table's teaspoon of coconut um, flour. All right, guys. We have our teaspoon of coconut flour in this bowl. Throw our frozen strawberries in there. And the purpose of this is to make the gnaw not sink to the bottom of the recipe. All right. So we're just gonna mix these up. We're gonna go ahead and get this mixed. Let's break up our egg yolks. Let's just start getting our batter all mixed together. this all mixed together. See how quick this comes together. It's super quick. Now this does make five mug cakes. Now I am creative. <clears throat> I like to make mug bowls. Um, you can do you, you can do that or you can do this. We have our blueberries. Get this in here. So we're going to get this 
I'm going to switch over to a spatula. So we'll get this on, pull it in. This next step is just in your cooking vessel for 90 seconds in the microwave. This makes five mug cakes. So if you're cooking for the week, make this batter, put it in a Tupperware, save it in the fridge, and scoop you out your portion and cook it up per day or cook them all in one day, just one at a time. And you have a lemon blueberry mug cake. Easy as that. Yummy. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, I know. Look at my hair. I'm going to get one of these in a mug in the microwave. 90 seconds. See you back. Hey, guys. Lemon blueberry pound cake. Oh, it smells delicious. It cooked perfect in 90 seconds. So I have some more of the dough, so I'm going to continue to make these. And then we can have them for breakfast every day this week. So we have breakfast in the bag. Haha. -ha. So that's our breakfast. That's our, our, our first alternative breakfast idea to bacon and eggs. Lemon blueberry mug cake. It's delicious. I have to wait for it to cool off. <laughs> but let me get done with the rest of these. And we've got all three of our great alternative breakfast ideas in the bag. You'll see the next one right coming up. Okay guys, this is our lemon blueberry mug cake. I did mine in a bowl, which I have my next one in already. I did one in a mug, but I like to do them in a bowl like this. And then some sugar-free whipping cream and a couple of fresh blueberries. And we are in Keto heaven for breakfast. I don't know about you, but this looks marvelous. Tell me that's not beautiful. Here, let's go down. A couple of blueberries on the whipped cream. We are good to go. We have our. Hey, Zane. Say hi to the people. Hello. Look at the camera. Okay, he's going to try the blueberry mug cake with whipped cream. No way this is keto though. <laughs> There's no way. Don't like it? Well, chew it. Do you like it or you don't like it? Get some whipped cream, it's good. Happy? I can't believe it's keto. How was the chocolate donuts? They were fabulous. He didn't like the ham and cheese hot pocket though, right? He didn't like the Dijon mustard in it. But with just ham and cheese, it'd have been good, huh? Mm. Alrighty, well, now you have it from the face of an eight year old <laughs> <laughs> who is not keto, who is now stuffing his face <laughs> with the fabulous breakfast. Okay. Bye, Zane. Say bye, people. Be like Evelyn. Bye, people. Sit up straight. Okay. Bye. All right, guys. Recipe number two. We are going to be making classic chocolate cake donut. First task, make a cup of coffee because we need it to sit and cool off. So I just, in my cake up brewer, I just brewed a cup of coffee. I'm waiting for that. It just got done, steaming hot. Ooh, let's put some heavy whipping cream in here and use. Have some coffee, not really, that's for later. So we're just gonna use six tablespoons of that. So what we're gonna use, these are gonna be a classic chocolate cake donut. And it's also from All Day I Dream About Food. You're gonna preheat your oven to 325. So we dropped the temp from 400 to 325. And I have a donut pan. Actually got this at Aldi's. Had it a while. I used it for bagels one time, I haven't used it again. So we're gonna grease this up really good with some olive oil spray or coconut oil spray, whichever one you wanna use. Um, we need a third a cup of coconut flour. 
Again, we're not doing the almonds. So does this say it is nut free? Let me see. Usually she says, usually she says. So these donuts come out to two net carbs per donut. It's not too bad. Okay, so we're having a 30 cup of coconut flour, a 30 cup of swerve sweetener, three tablespoons of cocoa powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. We need four large eggs, a fourth cup of melted butter, a half a teaspoon of vanilla, and six tablespoons of brewed coffee. So my butter is melted. My half stick of butter is melted in the microwave right now. This one's gonna go together quick and easy. Then we just, you basically, you mix the dry ingredients, you throw in, stir in the eggs, melted butter, and vanilla, and the coffee, mix it up, divide it into the pan, throw it in the oven for 16 to 20 minutes. So this one's a fast one. That's my kind of recipe. Let's get going on our cake donuts. There will be a glaze in our future. Okay guys, you're gonna throw together these donuts super quick. I love these super quick recipes. You like this angle? I don't know, here you go. Here's our bowl. All right, so we've got one third cup of coconut flour. Coconut flour is super absorbent, so you don't have to use a whole lot. So there we go. I'm just gonna kind of do this number. I'll probably whisk it here in a minute. All right, then we're going in with a, let's make sure I get this right, a third cup of swerve. Okay, me and these Ziplocs, I swear. This is a brand new swerve because we've been using it up around here. All right, third cup of swerve. All right, balance. All right, there a cup of swerve. We're going to go with three tablespoons of cocoa powder. Let's get this opened. Had this on hand, I just hadn't used it yet. Okay, three tablespoons of, so most of the stuff everybody should have at home. Of this, in, of this particular recipe. Okay, so we've got three tablespoons of cocoa powder. We're going in with a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. If I can find, oh, we're just gonna correct some out of our grinder. Okay, we're good. Feel good about that. And we're gonna have a teaspoon of baking soda, or baking powder, baking powder. Okay. Okay. So we're just gonna whisk this together. Get this all incorporated. And then it says, just gonna add the four eggs, the half a cup of melted butter, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So this here. Makes me want to sift. That baking powder, I think, is a little clumpy. Okay, so we're just gonna get in here with our, that's all of our powdered ingredients. Got to mix together. We're gonna go in with four eggs, and I know Iron Man, I'm doing it. It doesn't say whether they need to be room temperature or not. These are, because I've been at it all day. Three recipes, sure, I can do that in a day, no problem. Say no one. Okay. We're all putting in the work for this collab video. So let's just lightly melted the butter so that it did not, won't scramble the eggs. And we'll get our half of a teaspoon of which extract is we? Vanilla. Okay. okay, now I'm gonna mix this up before I add the coffee because my coffee is still kind of hot and I don't want it to scramble my eggs. So, I'm just gonna kind of get all this mixed together. And this is our batter. I mean, it's just like, we have a battery light? Of course we do. Forever. We have been using this camera all day, so. It has definitely used its battery. 
All right, let's just hope we can get this mixed up before we run out of juice. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my cup of coffee and it says six tablespoons. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. You could use decaf if you wanted, if that's a thing for you. I'm not over here, so we're good with a little caffeine in our donut. That's a way to wake up in the morning. All right, so I'm gonna, it says to mix, mix this all together, to well combine, divide the batter above the wells, and if you have a six well donut pan, you may work, need to work in batches. Oh, wow. Okay, well, this makes more than six donuts. <laughs> oh, eight, it makes eight donuts, okay. I was like, uh, I didn't read that it made like a dozen. Okay, so this is gonna make eight donuts and I'm just gonna use my little third cup measure to get this spooned into the, we're gonna go into the measuring cup with that so we don't make a mess. Hey guys, all right, we had a battery malfunction. We ran a battery. Okay, did a quick recharge. Our dough is done, it was that quick and easy. We're gonna use this third cup measure we used and we're just gonna fill the wells. First, we are gonna spray it. I'm gonna do this over my sink with our non-stick spray in the donut well. Whoo, smell like paint. So we're just gonna use this. You could use a ladle, you could use whatever. I'm just gonna do this in lieu of dirtying another dish. And we're just gonna get these all filled up. And we're gonna get these in the oven. It says 16 to 20 minutes. Mm. It looks like this. Um, about a third a cup is exactly right amount of dough, of batter for the donut wells. So this is supposed to make eight donuts. It looks like it's gonna make more than eight donuts, but you know what? We're just gonna fill our pan, pop these in the oven, and while they're baking, we'll make our glaze. So this is a quick, 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 quick recipe. I like those. Great for, oh, a Sunday brunch, you're having family over, you know, or just want a quick treat to make a great dessert. Meal prep these, have a couple for breakfast with a cup of coffee. All right, so quick and easy. Cake donuts. All right. All right, that is how quick this came together. Take longer to bake than they do to make. I love those kind of recipes. Okay, so we'll do this the batch later. I'll do the finish up this batch later. We're gonna throw these in the oven and make the glaze. So I'll be right back. All right guys, we are gonna make the glaze. Donuts are in the oven. We're gonna use a fourth a cup of confectioner sugar for it. Fourth cup, ooh, it's a little bit extra. So wipe some of that off. I don't wanna go too crazy. Okay. There we go. I'm recording. Okay, so we're gonna use a fourth cup of the swerve. We're gonna use one tablespoon of cocoa. We're going to use one tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. to use a fourth of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Well, we're gonna need some more vanilla after today. Okay, more vanilla in there. And then we are gonna put one and a half to two tea tablespoons of water. So first you're gonna, we're gonna mix this together. We're just gonna rinse off our batter. The same one we used for the, for the batter, the whisk. This is a quick recipe. Just get to start mixing this around and we'll start adding it by adding the water by the half of the tablespoon. Let's go. Okay. There we go, one and a half. And we'll get to see how this 
We want it to be a glaze that we can dunk the donuts in, so it needs to be a little bit, not like a frosting. Oh yeah, this looks perfect. So we're just gonna get this all whisked together, make sure it's combined, set it aside until our donuts are cooked and cooled, and we will have chocolate cake glazed donuts. So I'll show you the final product of recipe number two, which is our chocolate cake donuts. Simple, breast, simple, quick recipe, fun, easy. Do it on a weekend, do it on a weekday. Crap, it's, it was super quick. So you could like throw it in the oven, go take a shower, get ready, come out, you know, just wouldn't take any time at all to make these fresh or to have them pre-prepped and keep them in a Ziploc. So I'll be back with the, the finished product and then we'll be on to our last recipe. You gotta call that a win when they all fall right out of the pan. So I cooked these for exactly 17 minutes. They are perfect. I would say whisk. Let's sift our flour, cause look, yeah, we, we don't like that. There's a couple pieces, I'm gonna take them out. But anyway, we're gonna let these cool and then we're gonna glaze them. What? I'm gonna put pan number two in cause we're not gonna waste any of this batter. Hey guys, mozzarella cheese. All right, so. I have our donuts here. They're almost all the way cool. I'm just gonna dip them into our glaze and then putting it on our cooling rack with a piece of parchment paper underneath. So if it drips, it's just right there and it's nice and cleaned up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and you have to kinda tap them a couple times in there. If I have any spots, I just take me a little spoon, grab some extra glaze just go around so these are our chocolate donuts mm -mm. gonna let this set up and then we will take some more pics hey guys okay here's where I edited out all the dough making for the ham and cheese hot pockets I will be uploading that as a separate video from this one so where you where I'm cutting this little explanation in is where I'm starting to put together our ham and cheese hot pockets so I will put the recipe for the dough that you see me using for the hot pockets in a separate video but I'll upload it at the same time as I upload this one so thank you for your patience but I didn't want this video to be an hour long so that helped by moving the dough video to its own or the dough making to its own video okay so here we go with our ham and cheese hot pockets Okay guys, here is our dough ball. We're gonna divide this into 12. Now, fun fact I wanted to mention about this dough. It makes 12 of these Hot Pockets or ham pies, whatever you wanna say. But this also can be rolled out and made into a pizza crust. It, let's, it uh, could be six, it makes six, six inch pizza cut, uh, crusts half of this does and then you just cook it at 400 for five to seven minutes let it stand top it and put it back in the oven for another five to seven minutes the the each of these servings of dough is four net carbs 19.2 grams of fat and 13.9 grams of protein so it's very good macros but what you can do is i'm going to wrap this one up and i'm going to put it in a ziploc bag and you can freeze it for later so i'm only going to make six for this recipe because if you're meal prepping for the week you really are don't need 12 so if there's two of you or if there's you have a bigger household and everyone's keto but i thought this would be a great thing to have on hand for any time during the week if i wanted to to do anything with a pizza dough so i have a extra bonus thing of dough i'm gonna wrap it in some uh saran wrap and then i'm gonna pop it in the ziploc bag and into the freezer so you got breakfast and bonus dough Alrighty, so we're gonna get this portioned out into six pieces. I'm just gonna cover that up so it doesn't get dried out while we're, so I'm gonna go up like, let's make it like a log. It's really easy to work with. It's not near as sticky as fat head dough. So it is very, a lot easier to work with. So let's just take this into thirds and then we'll take those thirds into halves. So then we'll have our it, it does say if you have a tortilla press that is this will make an exactly good tortilla size it's suggested to use it I don't have one so we're gonna do ours the old-fashioned way but 
this dough comes together really quickly, especially if you have everything pulled out, pre-measured, you know, I do things wonky. It's just because I'm doing so many recipes all in the same day. So I'm gonna get my balls all rolled out and get them covered with some saran wrap so I can work with them one at a time. We're gonna roll these between two pieces of parchment paper and then we're going to get our filling together, which is super fast and easy. Um, it's just basically some mayo, some mustard, uh, chopped up ham, and it calls for mozzarella inside, but I'm gonna use cheddar and I'm gonna grade that fresh. So mm -hmm. <coughs> we're have mozzarella on the crust. So I thought I like the cheddar inside better. Ham and cheddar is my jam. And we're also gonna use a little bit of uh, olive oil mayo and some Dijon mustard to flavor, but you use what you like on your ham and cheese. So I'm gonna make get that in here. But you could, you could make pretty much any kind of filling in these you want. If you wanted to put ham and eggs in here, you could put ham and eggs and cheese in here. You could do whatever you want with your little ham pies. So this is a perfect dough recipe to make pretty much any kind of a, of a, I call it a calzone kind of look. You know, you fold it around and fold it over, crimp it. It looks kind of like a miniature calzone. Okay, so I'm gonna get these rolled out between two, two pieces of parchment paper and I'll get back when when we're there to mix up the inside that <laughs> what am i trying to say <laughs> to mix up the filling that's what i'm trying to say yeah it's one of those days okay guys <clears throat> i'm probably gonna only make three because they're just for me but i'm gonna freeze these other three <clears throat> and use them later and maybe some different ingredients so how i put my ball here um how i try to get the circle is to try to use my hand first so work it out if you can see just kind of pushing it out to kind of make it stay in a circle shape once you start using the rolling pin you kind of lose control of how it spreads out a little bit so i am trying to work these out we're, we're looking for six inches okay so i'm just going to continue to rub in a circle Just keep pushing towards the outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna start using the little, just keep going back and forth so I can try to keep my circle. Okay. Okay, we got this going. Outside and getting out a measuring tape and making sure there's six inches I'm just eyeballing it so let's kind of smooth this out making sure it's even it's not thicker in one spot than the other let's see we have six inches yet okay so here we go outside of getting a measuring tape and making sure this is six inches it looks like about six inches to me one two three four and a half we need a little bit bigger okay, we'll just keep smoothing this out there's still all right oh yeah they're coming together really easy so are they exactly as beautiful as they would be on a tortilla press no but you know what i'm gonna go to the goodwill i'm gonna try to find me a second hand bread maker because i don't know if i'll make it use it enough to buy a new one but i have a bunch of bread recipes that i found keto bread recipes to use in the bread machine so i want to try to do that one two three four five we're getting there after the first one, it'll get go faster and faster because you kind of already have an idea where you're going. So, okay. All right, all right. Here we go. There is our hen pie dough. All right, I have the oven at 400. Let's make some filling and get these. Assembled. I'm going to live this together so that it doesn't dry out and uh, We'll be back to assemble All right, here we go. We are going to assemble one. So we have our dough On our parchment paper. 
we're gonna take a good spoon of our Dijon mayo combination and we're gonna spread it around. We're gonna leave about an inch border around the outside. So about an inch border. Now you can use whatever combination. You don't like mustard, you don't like mayo, you like yellow mustard. You don't want the mayo and mustard at all. Like you could really do whatever you want. The world is your oyster. Okay, so we have this. We wanna take our two halves of our provolone cheese that we've cut in half and we wanna nestle those and leave a gap down the middle so that when we have these and we fold them over, hmm, I know, don't, don't look at my nails, they look horrible. I have a vitamin D deficiency and they look like a crap. So then we're gonna take, it says about three tablespoons of your ham and cheese mixture and you just pile it on one side. Uh, so we're gonna get this all in here. Add a little bit more cheddar. We want to make sure we leave our border without any filling. Okay. We're going to fold this over, hoping that we didn't overfill it. Just continue to kind of tuck everything back inside if it comes out of its location and then get a uh, So we'll start at this end and we're gonna crimp it over. We're just gonna work our way around, crimping this over as we go. And we'll go on this side. Uh-oh, it's pretty forgiving now. Kind of pick up the ledge and push it up and over. Wanna make sure you get the seal. We want everything coming out while it's baking. Get your little seal, pick it up. A little bit of a delicate part of the process, but not impossible. So I don't know about you, but that looks absolutely beautiful. What do you think? Does that look beautiful or does that look beautiful? All right, I'm gonna bust the next two out. We're gonna get these on a baking dish. Oven's still at 400, so we're gonna get the other two fetched out and then we're gonna egg wash them and we're get them in the oven and ooh, we'll be ready to rock and roll. I can't wait to try them. Yummy! Okay. Okay, found it. So we're just gonna brush these. I have such a disaster going on over here, guys. Just gonna brush all of these pies. Just wanna make sure everything got good and locked in. I had one little rip, so I used some extra dough to kind of band-aid that. You know, not always perfect. It's homemade. Hands are gonna be delicious. So we're Get these all egg washed. We're gonna get them in the oven. So 400 degree oven for 10 minutes. Now our first one looked the best. Not how it always goes. Okay, all right. These are going in the oven for 10 minutes. See you when they're done. All right guys, here they are. I probably have cooked them a little bit longer, but they're gonna cook as they sit. I have them sitting over where the vent of the stove is, so it's just to let them cool down for a little bit and then we'll be back. All right guys, second batch with the everything bagel seasoning on it. Yummy. Delicious. Well guys, those are our video. There's my video. Those are my recipes. I hope you like them. I hope you thought that they were original and great. And I hope that some of you make these. And if you do, tag me. Um, I am super proud. I am super happy with things I made. I am so excited to see everyone else's recipes. I have a list of what they are, but it's just not the same as when you see them done, complete and so yummy. Everyone's working really hard, so show everybody that love. Give them all the likes, give them all the subscribes and the bells. Do all the things YouTube. Everyone worked really hard to come up with three individual recipes amongst five people. So that is 15 recipes for you guys. We baked it out, we cooked it out. We all did uh, hard work to make these content for you and we, we just hope everyone shares the love. So. If you're new, welcome. If you've been here, thank you for coming back. And give this video a big thumbs up and a subscribe and a bell also. And as I always say, and I mean with all my heart, thank you very much.